Coming up on today's edition of Locked on Eagles, we're going to get into some offensive stat-based questions. Is Jalen Hurts going to reach 4,000 yards in 2022? Who's going to have 1,000 yards receiving, if anybody, for this first time since 2014? 1,000-yard rusher. We'll get into all that and more on this edition of your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast, Locked on Eagles. You are Locked on Eagles, your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We thank you so much for making Locked On Eagles your first listen each and every day. Welcome in, Eagles fans, to a Wednesday edition of the show. I'm Louis DiBiase. He's Gino Camilleri. We've been your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast now for four years running, available on all podcast platforms and on YouTube as well. Make sure you hit us up on Twitter. We're talking birds all throughout the day, especially now with training camp. Under two weeks away, two weeks from yesterday, July 26th of the NovaCare Complex, on Twitter at LockdownBirds, at GC24 underscore football, and at DiBiase, L-O-E. Gino, we got into some defensive stat-based questions yesterday as we get ready for training camp, talking about, you know, who's going to lead the defense in sacks, interceptions, tackles for a loss. Like, who's going to outplay each other at the linebacker position between Kazir White and Kobe Dean, Davian Taylor, and TJ Edwards, Hassan Riddick, and Josh Sweat up front. The new roles for Fletcher Cox and Brandon Graham, a jam-packed show. We're going to do it again today for the offense. And I think the offense is more interesting from a numbers perspective, you know, just because of the fantasy football culture of the NFL now. People love to look at, you know, how many yards, touchdowns, yards per carry, a running back had, a receiver, a quarterback. I think offense, would you agree, is more of a number-based unit compared to defense? So I feel like this is going to be a show fans really take to. Unless you're a crazy person like myself who does IDP, individual oh, defensive players. I love players. IDP. No, man, I'm with you. I love IDP and fantasy. One of the most underrated parts of fantasy football. When you really get into the Down one and I need a tackle and I get it from some random linebacker. Oh, yeah. Inject that into my veins. <laughs> Absolutely. And the big thing around offense is it is closely linked to fantasy football and it's closely linked to numbers and statistical outputs much more than defense is because when you look at defense, everybody's going to have a hundred tackle player on right. their team. Yeah. Somebody's going to get close to 10 sacks. Somebody's probably going to have three to four interceptions. The variability comes into play on offense when you have the Cooper cups of the world versus your middle of the road wide receivers. There's a clear discrepancy between the top the middle, and the bottom, simply by looking at the numbers. And sometimes yeah. you could get gaudy numbers like the Kirk Cousins of the world, and we know that every stat really Derek doesn't. Carr over the yeah, years. Derek yeah, Derek Carr in the past, outside of last season, and now it's Vontae Adams. I mean, buy mm -hmm. all the stock you can in that. But in Philadelphia, it's been something that stats have kind of faded away from the Eagles. They haven't had yeah. these – Big time producers outside of Carson Wentz's on both sides four thousand yard season, thousand yard receiver hasn't been since Jeremy Macklin. They haven't had a consistent running back hit a thousand yards in the last couple. Of Not years. since I don't think Gino it's been since twenty fourteen for a running with back it, either. Lashawn with McCoy, Lashawn, yeah, yeah, and tight ends for quite some time. Zach Ertz got close to that number, but he never mm -hmm. eclipsed it. But in today's NFL, it's not crazy to say that a tight end can have a thousand yards and in this Eagles offense which is so skilled and one of the most skilled that we've seen on paper we're going to be looking at those numbers there's going to be statistical evidence that is going to show us is this thing working right. is Howie Roseman Jonathan Gannon Nick Sirianni Shane Steichen Jalen Hurts are they on the same page and that's going to come to fruition in offense because the owner of the team he doesn't care about defense. He doesn't care about running the football. He cares about putting up points through the air. Yeah. He said it himself many Absolutely. times. And that's got to be the MO moving forward with this team. And I, you know, you made a good point. And I think, again, these shows aren't to make some giant statement about how important numbers are. Because as you mentioned, no. I mean, the Eagles haven't had a thousand yard receiver or running back in eight years since Jeremy Macklin and LaShawn McCoy. Actually, listen to this crazy stat. The Eagles haven't had a 1,000 yard receiver right since 2014. There have been 140 
thousand yard seasons by 68 different receivers since the Eagles had one. But that, like you said, that doesn't really how, show how that they haven't had. Statistically, does that make sense? It's incredible. I don't get it. It's an incredible feat. But, you know, that doesn't mean they've won a Super Bowl since then. They've made the playoffs right. in four of the last five years. So the numbers don't tell the entire story. And they've had a bunch of running backs since LaShawn McCoy that have really helped this football team. Jay Ajayi, Garrett Blunt, Darren Sproles, Miles Sanders, Boston Scott. The list goes on and on. But I think the numbers at the same time, though, can display – some of the success that these units have, you know, you can go with deeper numbers, but just overall, you know, I think they do tell a part of the story. You just have to be responsible with how you use number in sports, right? I think mm -hmm. compared to baseball where numbers on the surface really do tell most of the story, football is way different. You have to contextualize Absolutely. everything and, and numbers can lie a lot. I.e., as you said, you know, Kirk Cousins. And that's where I wanted to start was with Jalen Hurts, Gino, because, you know, I think you talk about, the Eagles have had one 4,000-yard passer ever. It was Carson Wentz in 2019. As a matter of fact, he did that without a single receiver eclipsing 500 yards. That's never happened in NFL history. But outside of that, Donovan McNabb didn't do it. Randall Cunningham, Michael Vick, Nick Foles in his historic seasons. It never happened. So the question for you to start is, does Jalen Hurts reach 4,000 yards? I mean, look, that's not easy. Only 10 quarterbacks did it last year. And you know, I, I'm not saying that if he doesn't hit 4,000 this year, that means he didn't take the step. But, you know, it will be interesting to see how close he gets. When you're looking at a statistical output of the passing yards in Eagles history, yeah, you can put the axis out there. Carson Wentz is going to be up there right. in the top right corner because he's the outlier. Now, if you get into 36, 3,700 yards, yeah. I think that's a fair – point and a fair number for Jaylen yeah he improves by like 500 there. yards I I should we should expect that with an added volume and weapons mm -hmm. yeah without a doubt I think 36 and one is the number to get to 3600 in the air mm. 1000 on the ground 4500 4600 yards all purpose I think that's a fantastic season for Jalen Hurts but to say that he's going to be yet another 4,000 yard passer would just go against every law of average that has played out in Philadelphia over the last couple of years. But none of those teams have had Devontae Smith, AJ Brown, Dallas Goddard, and all of these weapons that truly right. could push you over that hump because sometimes players have to make up for the lack of scheme and sometimes scheme has to make up for the lack of players. But when both of them correlate, which I believe this season is going to come to fruition with guys that can win in all areas of the field on offense, a quarterback who's versatile makes you play 11-on-11, 11 11, a offensive line which we don't even need to speak about how good they are, and a core mm -hmm. of running backs. It can only be said that year over year, as compared to last season, where you didn't have A.J. Brown, you didn't have all of these weapons on defense, which will probably get the ball back for you more often. They'll probably cause more turnovers, most likely put you in a better position to score. You have no reason to believe otherwise that Jalen Hurts yeah. should improve. He better be close, Gino. I mean, that's the right. thing is, you know, you look at last year, he was at, what, a little under 32? He was around like 3,200 mm -hmm. yards. And, you know, with the added volume and the better weapons, I want him to be close. But I'm not going to say right now Jalen Hurts needs to have at least – this amount of passing yards in 2022 for me no. to deem him successful and to be the franchise quarterback moving forward. No number, no benchmark is there to meet for Jalen this year when it comes to numbers. I, I think you want to see overall all of his numbers improve. Passing yards, the efficiency metrics, right? Mm -hmm. Completion percentage, you know, DVOA, passer rating, all of those things, his touchdown to interception ratio. You want that to be very lopsided in a positive way. So, you know, you want the numbers to reflect the improvement, but I don't think there's a certain mark that tells us, oh, he did take the step right. as a passer. And again, as I said, you know, it's it's hard to – I want him to be close, like 36-plus hundred yards. But as I said, only 10 quarterbacks in the NFL last year eclipsed 4,000 yards. And, Gino, I think there's more than four, 10 franchise quarterbacks in the NFL. So it doesn't tell the whole story. But I agree. I would like him to be close. Here's how he would reach that. So he would need to have – he would need to average 51 more passing yards a game 
and you would need to have 867 more total passing yards over a 17 game season because last year he averaged 184 yards per game this year he would need to average 235 I think it's fair to again ask for him to be close to that but as I said, I'm not with a disciplined approach here where we're demanding anything. One Eagles quarterback has ever done that in one season. So, you know, it doesn't happen often. It's not like when you were in elementary school and they would do a canned food drive and they probably had a big thermometer on some wall in your elementary right. school that they would fill in with a red marker to get to that level that you wanted yeah. to be. That's not how Jalen Hurts is going to be evaluated going into this yeah, it's year. A subjective, like, it's a subjective it, thermometer this year. Yeah, yeah, very much so. You have to skew things to the context. I mean, mm -hmm. let's just say the worst case scenario happens and A.J. Brown goes down and – uh, Jordan Mailata right. gets injured. Like, yeah, that's what happens if 2019 happens again? You're not going to, Jalen Hurts isn't going to do what Harson did and have the 4,000 yards. I mean, that's just not, it's not going to happen. That was an anomaly. And, and oh, to yeah. say that that could it's happen. It's the first time again. it ever happened in, do you know, in, in NFL football. history in yes, ever. Exactly. Yeah, it was the it's, anomaly. But what you can look at is starting quarterbacks over the years in Philadelphia. What was that number? Yes, we're in a, a much more advanced passing offense. But they're okay with that 36, 37, 100 yeah. number because they're going to get it done on the ground. Right. Jaylen what he Hurts had last year, Gino, was too low. It wasn't high absolutely. enough. Absolutely. It wasn't high enough. And to improve on the ground as well, I think that's an area where he could get north of 56 yards a clip this season, Lou. With how many guys you're going to have to defend? Are you going to turn your back to Jalen Hurts? while you have these playmakers that are going down the field. No, you're going to have to watch A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, which if they're playing man, Jalen could take off, and he's been smarter in that area. And I think moving into this season with the arm, with the feet, put that all together with the talent around him, the scheme, the personnel, it should all mesh. I'm not going to say – I have a hard number. He's out of Philadelphia if he doesn't hit this. If he doesn't yeah. get to this touchdown to interception race. You'll know no. it when you watch it, Gino. You'll, you'll be able to feel it Just, without looking at the numbers if he's the guy or not. And I'm not an right. eye test guy, you know, but I'm also not a basic read the box score stat kind of person either. Again, you have to contextualize everything in football. Definitely According so. to our listeners, though, 87% of our listeners on Twitter think he will meet that mark. I think the optimism in Philly is really high and that's a good thing heading into training camp, but I think he'll come close. I think both of us agree in that sense. Mm. Today's episode of Locked On Eagles is brought to you by Dave. Level with me here for a minute, Eagles fans. I think we've all been in this situation before. At some point in our lives when we're really tight on cash, maybe you could only afford to put a few gallons of gas in your tank. I've had that issue you know, especially with gas prices recently, or let's say you got another save the date. I got a bunch of weddings coming up this year and you're wondering how you're going to afford a gift. That's where Dave comes in to help. If you're living paycheck to paycheck or struggling to make ends meet, it can be really stressful when unexpected expenses come up. Now Dave can help you get out of a pinch when you really need it. Hindsight is 2020 and you can't change the past, but what if you could get a little help from future you? Maybe you'd ask to borrow a little bit of cash. Now you can with Dave. Dave is the banking app that can help you get $500 instantly with extra cash. That's more money to fill your tank, buy a wedding gift, or catch up on bills. You can finally tackle those expenses that have been stressing you out without any hangups. There's no interest and no credit check needed. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get the financial relief they need with extra cash right now. So if you're in a pinch and need some future help from future you, Download Dave and think of it as a helping hand from you down the road. Download the app from the App Store right now. It's Dave, D-A-V-E. Sign up for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking provided by Evolve, member FDIC. Future you is going to thank you because of Dave. Uh, Gino, as we get here into some more offensive stack questions, we're going to dive into the running back position and, you know, talk about Miles Sanders and if he could reach that 1,000 yard mark. I think a lot of the attention has gone to, you know, receivers and, oh, no receivers had 1,000 yards in Philadelphia since Jeremy Macklin, but there hasn't been a running back that's had over 1,000 since LaShawn McCoy that exact season. So we'll get into that. But first, real quick, guys, too, want to shout out uh, the new promotion the new show that we have coming out on the lockdown nfl podcast on july 18th nfl stars that move the betting line the most 
at betonline.net. Well, starting July 18th, Lockdown's going to give you the top 50 most valuable players in the NFL from the odds makers at Bet Online. Available again July 18th on the Lockdown NFL podcast, which you can get on all podcast platforms and on YouTube. Jalen Hurts is on that list, and I did react to where he was. I thought it was a fair assessment. Again, find out in just four days on Lockdown NFL. Gino, I think the running backs are going to be important too for the Eagles this year. I think, again, we want them to pass more, but when you have an elite offensive line and you have Jalen Hurts as your quarterback and you have a stable of running backs like they do, that's an asset you're going to want to utilize. It helped you make the playoffs last year. You want to be multiple in the NFL. You don't want to be the 2021 offense, but you also don't want to be the 2018 offense either that couldn't run the football. So mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how they utilize these guys in the backfield. Does Miles Sanders come close to a thousand yards? Again, it hasn't happened since 2014. You know, it's interesting. Like, I think most people would say no, but he's come close, man. Like you look at, he's one of 10 running backs ever to have at least 750 rushing yards and a four and a half yards per carry average in his first three seasons. He had 867 last year in 12 games, 754 the year before in 12 games. Like if he's healthy, which is a massive if for him, but if he was healthy in those two seasons, he hits that mark, I think at least once. So again, I don't know if he can stay healthy, but if he does, I'd say he does it. And that's the thing you said, 12 games back to back. Right. I mean, he missed a month both times. I mean, that's, or that's five games this year. That's, that's, it's hard huge. to predict. Mm -hmm. It's huge. And the efficiency is always there. It's just it, the volume's not there, and that's on him. It's availability. And the efficiency is going to have to be even greater this year, Lou, when you look at all of the options that they have in the backfield. Because not just do you have a quarterback who is going to run the ball, you also have Kenny Gainwell, who is more efficient than Miles was. You also have Boston Scott, who is more productive than Miles Sanders was. And you bring in A.J. Brown, who has this body that you want to get the ball in his hand. They're going to utilize him. Smith, who they did that with last year, get Quez Watkins in space. To me, there's too much. There's mm. too much committee there to pick up yards on the ground for there to be a 1,000 yard back on this team. But does that mean that Miles Sanders doesn't have a productive season? Absolutely not. I think he could still break off big runs. I still think he's going to get a bulk of the carries. He might not see as much in the receiving game. That'll probably go to Kenny Gainwell. More to Boston Scott as well, who's very good at receiving. But Miles, what I believe he has to do in his contract year is, one, stay healthy, and two, that efficiency that you talked about, Lou, he has to even up that efficiency this year. Because those runs where you see him and he kind of bounces it back into the linebacker in the second level where he should have cut it inside – where he does have some vision concerns still this part into his career, you're not going to be able to do that because they have other backs that will hit those holes and they can bring in. But if Miles does hit those holes and his vision is good and he's healthy and he's explosive, man, there's no reason he can't be the highest 75-plus yard rusher in the league this year because he's done it in the past yeah. I could see him doing that once again you make some good points they're going to pass more Kenny Gainwell is going to mm -hmm. be more involved this year for sure Boston Scott's always reliable when you have a mobile quarterback like Jalen Hurts that's going to take carries away so you know I definitely get that I I think really all he needs to do though is stay healthy because you know it's not like he's ever had a Derrick Henry Titans like load in this backfield over the last three years, and right. he has... And he didn't at Penn State either. Right, and if he was healthy the last two years, he would have hit a 1,000 yards. So he he made the most of his touches. And you're right, like the inconsistency, excuse me, inconsistency can be there in between the tackles, especially with Miles. Mm -hmm. But if we get the Miles Sanders in the second half of last year when he was healthy, you know, go, go back and watch that Jets game, the violent runner he was. Oh, yeah. That was that's the Miles Sanders when he puts it, it all together. You saw it tick halfway through the yeah. year, too. And he again, it's, it's few year. and far between sometimes mm. with him. But when it comes together, he is a special running back. And so, you know, if I were to bet, I would say he does meet it this year. 
But it, it's a tough bet because, as you said, there's a lot of factors with the other running backs and the quarterback who's mobile mm-hmm. and the increased volume in passing and Sanders' health. It's it's not an easy bet, but I would just bank on even if he plays a couple more games, 14 or 15 games. and Because you remember even last year, the first like month of the year, there were games where he was only getting two to four carries. Like That's not sure. going to happen again either. Even though they're going to pass more, he's not going to have a Cowboys game like last year where he runs the football two times either. So mm-hmm. it's a tough bet to make, but it'll be really interesting. Gino, like, it is nuts that you know they have always been a by-committee type of team in general always. with their defensive line, their receivers, their running backs. But to not have – so Zach Ertz actually did have 1,000 yards in 2018 receiving, but to not have a receiver or running back – eclipse a thousand is wild Mm -hmm. it really is it goes and just shocks me that any statistical number sequence that you want to put to it would lead to that outcome that they there's been some never... crazy players that have had a thousand yards, man. Like, you know, we're Buffalo guys growing up in Western New York. Like John Brown had a thousand receiving yards in 2019. I'm not a Buffalo. Let's get that. Well, I just meant, okay, sorry. You're yes, a Rochester I get, guy. But no, we're hey, I did York want John, John Brown could have been a thousand yard receiver. In you wanted him in Philly, man. Brand. You wanted I him. I really did because I, I know and I saw what explosion and guys that could get down the field can do. And you look at why we were so high on a player like Miles Sanders, right? The last couple seasons. You and I saw it in that Buffalo game back in 2019. Yeah. Not just what he could do in the run, in the pass, he was electric. But then things started to kind of dwindle out. I mean, he got injured. He, of course, didn't have that explosion because he wasn't fully healthy that next season. You go to last year, it's the same type of thing. And then he finally gets around to getting into the miles who he was. And then he busts you out hope, a 70-yard touchdown run. You're like, yeah, you hope that trajectory right is going to continue in this offseason, being fully healthy. And we talk about all these weapons on offense as a bad thing to take away from him. Like I said yesterday with Hassan Riddick, yes, it'll take away statistically, but when they're out on the field, your eyes have to be in a million different places on offense now. Mm. You can't just say, oh, we got a key on Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard, and Miles Sanders. No, you're going to have to be aware of every single player on the field, which for a running back like Miles, if he gets into the open space and a safety has his back turned to him, man, Good luck trying to track that kid down in the open field. Be- and I'm excited. I, I want to see Booby hit 1,000 yards. I want to see Jalen hit 4,000. But I would look at it from a realistic note of what's around them. It's not a bad thing to yeah. be talented, though. I will never It's kind of a double-edged that. sword, you know, because the, all these weapons are going to help relieve the pressure on these players, and it's going to make their looks a whole lot easier. You know, the Golden State Warriors, when they had Kevin Durant, like – who are you going to double? Right. You, you really can at that point. You got to play zone. Same thing with the Eagles. But at the same time, yeah, it's going to take the football away from a lot. Like Miles Sanders a, a month ago said he wants more opportunities. But I got news for you. I mean, you're not going to get more carries unless you Only stay one healthy. of those pigskins out there, brother. Yeah. You, you, on the season, you could have a total of more carries because you played five more games, but your game by game average is not going to go up. So, but uh, again, the efficiency is if that stays the same like it has, then he could come close. Gino, I want to get into you, too, wrapping up the show, the wide receivers. Uh, This is interesting, too, because, again, since Jeremy Macklin, they haven't had a 1,000-yard receiver. But I don't want to just talk about yards. I want to talk about two receptions and touchdowns and the other ways these receivers can make an impact on the game. And it's tough because I feel like A.J. Brown, I've noticed the minute they traded for A.J. Brown, he – and as he should be, he's been one of the best receivers in the league since he was drafted in 2019, but it's like – A.J. Brown is the focus of the receiving group, and everybody else is, you know, two, the three. But I don't know, man. I think if you're asking me who has more receptions, more yards, based on his year two jump, based on getting the football more, getting easier looks if the CB1 is going after A.J. Brown, I might put my money on Devontae Smith this year over A.J. Not saying he's going to be a better player overall, but I think it's 1A – I don't even want to say 1B, man. I think Devontae Smith is as good, and I think he's being a little overlooked. The luxury that wide receivers have that running backs don't have is that there's only one guy that's basically going to cover a running back in the pass game. It's most likely going to be a linebacker that is probably their best athlete, and if he's not covering the tight end, he's going to be covering you. As a cornerback, 
man, it's few and far between that you're going to get two guys that can consistently play man-to-man each game. And not to mention Quez Watkins, who I mentioned last week, is the most second most efficient slot cornerback in all of football last year. Yep. Everybody drops down the depth chart because of A.J. Brown. No longer is Devontae Smith going against the Pat Sertains, the Trevon Diggs of the world, the number one guys who he did have success against. I was going to say he still had almost 1,000 yards with that in an offense that didn't throw the football. And now with a bigger focus on the pass and Devontae Smith able to go against second corners, I think and I believe that he should see nothing but an increase in all of those areas that you said. Targets, receptions, yards per – I would say yards per catch goes up too. I think he's going to find oh, yeah. more spaces in the intermediate and deep areas because when you run those those deep double looks, when you have him and Devontae on the same side and you run this deep over dagger concept where Devontae clears out, A.J. Brown comes over, you might get that safety to go down to A.J. Brown and guess what? Devontae Smith is behind you on that go route. I just see that happening more often than not because A.J. Brown, like you said, is a top guy and they're going to want to take him away. And not to mention, your top safety is most likely going to have to cover Dallas Goddard one-on-one so you don't have that luxury of putting another top cover guy there. You're going to have to put your second safety on that side as well. So you're getting the benefit of having the second guy going against a 1B guy, who I would even say is my 1A at times. I think there are some areas that he does much better than A.J. Brown, but there's also areas that A.J. Brown completely and goes you know, away and blows him out of the water. The other part, too, is A.J. Brown's had injury issues that Devontae Smith, at least in the first season, didn't have. So, honestly, right now, gun to my head, I'd say more receptions, more yards – if I had to bundle them together, I'd say Devontae Smith. Um, Count me in on that as well. Let's I, but I think no matter what, one of the two are going to eclipse 1,000 yards. I think it's got to happen this year. They are just too talented. And if they just increase that volume in the passing by a little more, like, again, Devontae almost hit it last year. And mm-hmm. so I, I think it's going to happen. I wanted to ask you, too, though, about Dallas Goddard because Goddard's in an interesting spot, you know, with A.J. Brown now being added. You know, he's coming off a career season where he had, you know, over 800 yards receiving, you know, over 50 receptions. Would you guess, and that was in a year where he was injured as well, and again, they didn't pass a whole lot, would he have, but now that A.J. Brown's in and you want Smith more involved and Quez Watkins, does he have more or less yards and receptions from last year? Well, the thing that I would look at, I wouldn't look at so much with A.J. Brown. I would look at more of the guy that they acquired to put behind him in Grant Kelsatera, who is a bigger receiving threat than anybody that they had on the roster mm-hmm. last year, Fair being point. Jack Stoll and Tyree Jackson. I'm not saying he's going to take the lion's share away from Dallas Goddard, but there will be more passes thrown his way than there were to Jack Stolt last year. Let's just be honest. That's what he did at SMU. That's the reason he was brought in here. He played with Jalen Hurts. We know what he's going to do. Dallas Goddard is still going to be a top five tight end in most statistical areas, in my opinion. I don't know if he gets to 1,000 yards, but I could see 850 being there. I could see him grabbing six, seven, maybe even eight touchdowns this year. Oh, he was Hurts' guy in the red zone. I'd say right now if I had to pick somebody to lead the team in receiving touchdowns, it's Goddard over Smith and Brown. And when you spread this team out wide, you can keep him in line, get him off the scene real quick, get him on a two-way go against a backer or safety. He's one of the better route-running tight ends in football. Like you said, he's one of those targets that if things go awry, I'm getting my eyes to the six-foot-six tight end who's going to go up and get that ball for me. And I'm excited to see what Dallas does in terms of opening up the run game as well because he's been key in producing a lot of those open run looks where you're able to bring him across the formation pin the guy down and just spring the running back. He's been one of the most effective blockers since he came into the NFL. Oh, from the start, man. In 2018, he was great in that area. And that's something Zach Ertz took a while to get better at. Mm -hmm. Goddard was great from the start. It'll be be interesting. It'll be close because, again, it's kind of a double-edged sword. Like, there's more passing attempts, but you add A.J. Brown. And let's say A.J. Brown. So, Jalen Rager last year, Gino, he had 33 receptions. So, Brown's going to get those catches. Plus, let's say another – 
you know, I think he has at least 70. So another 30 to four, you know, another 40 catches. And Devontae Smith had 64 last year, right? So let's say he gets at least 10 to 15 more. Will there be 50 plus more passing attempts to make up for that and help Goddard at least get to the number he he was at last year? I would hope so. And Mm -hmm. the thing is, the efficiency has always been there with Goddard, kind of like Sanders. He averaged outside of Kyle Pitts more yards per reception than any tight end last year at 14.4, you know, per catch. So I think, honestly, I think the numbers, it might be a push. I think the yards will be around the same. I think his receptions, though, will likely increase uh, by a little bit, though. I, I think Goddard last year, that that's a pretty good, if I can get my tight end with A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, he's like my third target to get, you know, almost 60 catches and, mm-hmm. you know, oh, nearly 900 yards is that third guy. That That's perfect for me. I would focus more on Dallas' t- uh, touchdown numbers than yeah. his overall yards. His mar- his yards might go down. I don't think the touchdown production is going to change much. If anything, no. I believe it would go up. You would see more looks for him in the red zone. They're going to be more spread and more 11 personnel based. And because... I think his explosive plays are going to go up too, Gino, because I mean, the middle, the middle of the field is going to be open. way more open. And, and Hurts, Absolutely. hopefully, if he develops, is going to actually target that area. Another area that we had talked about, Lou, yeah. that Jalen didn't like to go over the middle. All of these players, I would say, outside of Quez and Devontae. Actually, Devontae went over the middle quite a lot towards the end of yeah. the year last year on a lot of those deep crossers. Mm. You better hope that your quarterback has the gall to make those throws because if he does, all of these numbers that we talked about should come to fruition. I don't see that this Eagles team with the guy that – is creating the plays, is creating the offensive game plan week to week, is a bad game planner. I think Nick Sirianni did a lot more with a a group that many coaches might not have gotten that much out of last season. And now he has, let's say he brought one pie to the party last year, one pizza to the party. He's got five or six pizzas. He's going to feed people. He's going to make sure everybody gets there. I think there's enough to go around, man. I mean, again, Devontae almost had 1,000 last year. Mm -hmm. I I think there's enough for him to get like 15 to 20 more catches, Dallas Goddard's numbers to maybe go up just a little bit more, and you have room for A.J. Brown. I think if Jalen Hurts meets the expectations and you do increase that passing volume, you should expect that. I think it's – I mean, look at the Cincinnati Bengals last year. They had – I'm not asking for two receivers to have 1,000 yards like you know, Boyd and Higgins had, but, and Tyler Boyd had over 800, but if I can get one guy to have a thousand, another one in that 900 to 950 range, you know, maybe Devontae's one with a thousand. And then AJ Brown has similar numbers Mm -hmm. to Smith last year. And Goddard kind of averages out to what he had last year, maybe more catches, but maybe a little less yards, but more touchdowns. And and Quez Watkins improves to his numbers. I think that that's very realistic. And, you know, again, well, it's just got to see, it's all up to Jalen Hurts, man. It really is to to make sure these guys are getting theirs. So but um, I, I I'm, I'm so excited to watch it, man. Two less than two weeks away, it, it looks so much fun on paper. I just want to see how this offense gels together. I mean, as you said, even like Hurts over the middle. That's why AJ Brown was so huge to get because he's such a physical presence in that way. He's going to play inside a lot. There's just so much you can do with this unit. It's it's going to be fun to watch the chess pieces move. To bring this full circle to 2014. If A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith put out Jeremy Macklin and Jordan yeah. Matthew numbers, would you be happy with that? Yeah. No, absolutely. Jordan Matthew said nearly 900 yards as a rookie. He had, a, you know, about, what, six, seven touchdowns? And, mm-hmm. yeah. No, absolutely. I, I I would take that. And then, because that means somebody had, Macklin had, remember, almost 1,400 yards. Yep. So. I'm saying as a collective unit, if you could get yes. to 2,200 2, yards. 2,200 yards, yeah, sign me up. I don't care how well, how it happens, sign me up for that. And Goddard's going to have more than what Ertz had in 2014. So it's going to look I believe so, too. Yeah. I believe so, as well. And you you should believe that Quez Watkins could be in for another big year, man. You get him open, he's going to eat down the field. Like he's gonna absolutely yeah. his numbers might field. overall not not increase a whole lot. I think he'll be around that six to seven hundred yard mark. But Gino, you know, like his twenty plus yard receptions are gonna go up way more. He was Through at twelve roof. last year. He could have had sixteen plus if he got some different looks. So I think the efficiency with Quez is gonna go through the roof as well. I believe the efficiency of this offense as a whole. It yeah. might take a few weeks for the defense to get right, mm. but this offense. I truly believe we won't see that stumble out of the gate as we saw last year. I don't believe they're going to go out 
and throw Jalen Hurts 45 times a game right off the bat. They're going to mix in closer to 55 to 45 run or pass to run. I don't think you'll see these games where they only hand the ball off two times and throw it. And you also see at the end of the year where they're not throwing at all. There's going to be a middle ground to 2021. Yeah. Last year was the literally the tail ends of both sides. It was a tale of two halves of the season, Mm. which ultimately is leaving us in a place saying, if we do what they did in the beginning, it's not going to be great. But if they can carry on the trajectory and how they left off last season, Prior to the Tampa game, we're not going to put that yeah. out of the way, but what they did in the regular season and how were they were able to come together and truly buy into what Nick Sirianni was selling and that offense took off and won them a lot of the games down the stretch, that's what it's going to have to be this year. I hope, I hope that they're in games where it's 38 to 35 and the Eagles come out on top. It's all, it's I, all we want. I want to see Big 12 football back in the NFC East. They have the talent to do it. Let's see if they put it all together. We got you covered as we get ready for training camp each day throughout the week, Monday through Friday, and all podcast platforms in video form as well on YouTube. And make sure you follow us on Twitter. We're always talking birds throughout the day. Who do you think is going to lead the team in receiving yards, receptions? Does Miles Sanders hit that 1,000-yard mark? Make sure you vote on our poll, too, about Jalen Hurts eclipsing 4,000 passing yards at Lockdown Birds, at DiBiase, LOE and at GC24 underscore football. Thank you so much for making Locked On Eagles, the most Italian Eagles podcast, your most, uh, I should say, again, your only daily podcast, your first listen each and every day. Make sure your second listen is the Locked On NFL podcast, all the news across the league in under 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get your shows. For Gino Camilleri, though, for now, we're going to sign off. I'm Lou DiBiase. We'll see you tomorrow. As always, thank you for downloading. Thank you for watching and listening. And let's go, birds. Fly, Eagles, fly.